pain. Uh, we can oftentimes try to pull it out with needles, which we'll do in the office, and that's many times successful, but when it's not, we go in there and actually scrape it out. So this is not a low-grade nagging pain that's been there for years or months. This is a severe acute pain that's developed over a very short period of time and really, really is a problem. But fortunately, we can normally treat it without too much trouble in the office with medications and with injections. So we talked about the bones of the shoulder. That's the collarbone, clavicle, and that's one of the shoulder bones called the acromion. And can you see that gap in between? That's a normal gap between the acromion and the clavicle. So it's called the acromioclavicular joint. And its purpose is to allow connection between the actual, our actual body and our actual shoulder bone. And it is a joint that moves, but unfortunately, like any joint that moves, it can develop arthritis over time. So what happens is, rather than being a nice clear space like we see on this picture here, we get a much smaller closed space with bone spurs, we get inflammation, and we get pain. So the AC joint is right on top of the shoulder, right on top. So normally, if we move our arm across our body like we would do, for example, to put on a seat belt, we can do that without pain. When you develop pain in your acromioclavicular joint, or excuse me, when you develop arthritis in that joint, and you reach across your body, that joint compresses, so the arthritis in the joint becomes more painful, more symptomatic, and you'll feel it. Uh, fortunately, even though it's a common problem, we can treat it many times with just medication and injections, but in extreme cases, we'll go in there with a scope and a little tiny burr and actually shave out the bone spurs. And this is a picture of a surgery where we've actually taken out the bone spurs, and what you're looking at on the right side of this picture is the actual bone after the bone spurs have been resected. Frozen shoulder. Who's heard of a frozen shoulder? Yeah. So this is a very, very common problem that, that can occur alone, but many times occurs with impingement or with rotator cuff tears. And it's exactly what it means. Our shoulder over time, rather than being mobile, we can move it around in big giant circles, begins to contract and freeze up. And the reason for that, the reasons are many actually. It can occur in response to an injury. It can occur in response to another shoulder problem, such as a, ro such as a rotator cuff tear. We see it in people that have diabetes. We see it <coughs> excuse me, in people that have had recent surgery, say heart surgery or breast surgery. But at any rate, in a normal shoulder, the capsule or the ligaments that surround the shoulder are very, very loose. I mean, let's face it, the shoulder is normally a very loose joint. We can go around in giant windmill circles without too much trouble. But when the lining of the joint starts to become inflamed for whatever reason, that lining starts to contract. And as it contracts, the shoulder gets tighter and tighter. And some people literally can't even move their arm enough to put on their shirt. You know, women can't reach back to do their bra. Um, men can't reach into their back pocket to get to their wallet because the shoulder's freezing up. So what we do about that is many times we'll just do medications and physical therapy. If that doesn't work, uh, we'll go in there with a scope, clean out the inflamed, contracted, frozen tissue, which is always very, very inflamed. This is what it looks like. It's really, really beet red, lipstick red, inflamed, angry tissue that we can remove, free up the shoulder so that we can start moving our shoulder again and the pain goes away. Instability. So this is something that we see a lot in our younger patients, our athletes in particular. Sports that require large ranges of motion, baseball pitchers, are notorious for developing instability of the shoulder. Swimmers, big giant arm movements when they do the freestyle, or the any style for that matter, the backstroke. Uh, volleyball players, you know, tennis players hitting overhead. Anything that requires very uh, large ranges of movement, forceful blows with the arm, can develop shoulder instability. So what can happen over time is the ligaments or the cartilages or both that inherently stabilize the shoulder can, can stretch out or even tear, and you develop pain. You develop pain because the ball and socket isn't working in sync any longer. Because the ligaments that stabilize are now stretched out or torn, as you move your arm, as a baseball pitcher throws a pitch, or as a swimmer reaches for the wall, the ball may slip with respect to the socket and cause pain because now you're stretching on muscles and tendons and ligaments that shouldn't be stretched. So that's a problem that many times we can treat successfully with physical therapy to tighten the muscles. But when we can't, we have to actually go in there and physically reattach the torn muscles, or I should say the torn ligaments, back to the shoulder socket. Slap tears. So this is a little bit, we're getting into some more esoteric stuff here, but at the top of the shoulder, as we're looking at the socket end on, remember we talked earlier just a few minutes ago about a rim of cartilage that goes all the way around the socket 
to deepen it. The very, very top where our biceps tendon comes in and attaches to the shoulder, we can develop tears in that area that have been termed slap lesions, and that stands for superior, labral, anterior, to posterior lesions. So this is superior, meaning the upper part of the shoulder. This structure is the labrum, and it tears from anterior to posterior or front to back. So this can occur from a variety of things. It, it occurs commonly in our athletes. Our throwing athletes get this all the time. It can occur from a fall on the shoulder, suddenly compressing the joint, like when we fall directly on our side. Uh, it can occur from sudden forceful pulling on the arm. For example, you're climbing a ladder and you lose your footing and you fall down and your arm hangs on the upper rung. Any of those things can cause tearing of the labrum. This wasn't recognized until relatively recently. I mean, this is something that's really become a hot topic in orthopedic surgery. And what you have to do more times than not, this isn't something that generally heals on its own. Once we recognize that this is the cause of your pain, we'll go in there and clean it out and put sutures in it to repair it. Osteoarthritis, okay? Everybody's heard of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most common arthritis. It's the wear and tear arthritis that we get in our knees, in our shoulders, in our hips. And it's something that we don't see commonly in younger people. We get this as a result of the generation and aging over time. So many times if you come in to see me for shoulder pain and, and your age is you know, 60s, 70s, and on up, this is one of the things that I may think of because this doesn't happen in a 20-year-old. But what happens over time is this normally smooth cartilage surface of the ball and of the socket can degenerate or wear out over time, sometimes due to injury, sometimes due to previous surgery, but more times than not just due to, the, due to simple degeneration, which can be genetic. In other words, if your father or mother or brother or cousin or aunt had arthritis, you're more prone to developing it. So what we see on x-ray is here's the ball and here's the socket. I think you guys can appreciate how there's very little space between the ball and socket, just a little sliver. And we see these large bone spurs, this little hook down below, both on the ball and on the socket. We see these little cysts in the bones, and we see how white the bone is. All of those are indicative of arthritis. And so this causes pain, it causes stiffness, it causes loss of mobility, it causes creaking and grinding in the shoulder. And aside from medication, there aren't many alternatives than to actually go into the shoulder and replace it, like you see here in the lower right-hand corner. This is a, a shoulder replacement with an artificial metallic ball and a plastic socket. A lot of people will come in and say, you know, Doc, my shoulder hurts. But it, this is the shoulder, but they're feeling pain, you know, up in the neck. So when we talk about shoulder pain, there are things other than shoulder problems that can cause pain into the shoulder. And one of the more common things that causes that is pinched nerves in the neck. So this term cervical radiculitis, cervical just means neck, and radiculitis just means inflammation of the nerve that goes down into the arm. You'll typically feel pain, not necessarily in the shoulder itself, but more on the side of the, of the neck or in the top of the shoulder, up in these muscles here. If you look very closely, I hope you can see this. This is an MRI scan of somebody with a herniated disc. Do you see this black sort of blob in the back there? Can you guys see that? Well, this gray structure coming down is the spinal cord. These blocks here are the bones of the neck. These black oval structures in between are the discs of the neck. Here's the front, here's the back. This would be the person's mouth and nose. This would be the back of their head. And right there is an enormous herniated disc. Well, you can imagine that if this disc slips out towards the back and starts pushing on the spinal cord, as we see down here, the nerves that go down into the arm can be pinched and cause lots of problems. So just a heads up, not all shoulder pain is actually due to the shoulder. We'll talk a few more minutes uh, just about how I go about making the diagnosis of what's causing shoulder pain, you know, like we, or shoulder problems. Like we talked about at the start of the talk, everything causes pain. So I would typically ask you questions about, more about the pain, location, where does it hurt, or duration, how long has it hurt you, when did you first notice it, what's the quality of the pain, is it an aching, dull pain, is it a sharp, stabbing pain, is it a burning, tingly pain? All of those things mean different things to me. And how bad is it? I mean, is this just sort of a mild nagging thing that your wife made you come in for? Or is this something that's keeping you up at night, keeping you from going out, you know, playing with your kids or grandkids because the shoulder pain has gotten so bad?